Hello and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Croftall. And this week we are talking about Carrie. Woohoo! So first of all, uh, we had a fun weekend. <laughs> we were just at the Walker Stalker Convention in Chicago. It was so much fun. I love doing those conventions. So we... we are there um i'm there as an author we're selling our wares and yes. I've, got, I've got some craft things of uh through gothic gifts and it's just an excuse so i can go to conventions <laughs> with meg but don't tell anybody yeah <laughs> no but it's so much fun and uh, something i have to say about walker stalker conventions the people watching is so amazing and everyone is so nice like we everyone haven't is so nice. run into any creepy people no <laughs> Like, we haven't been harassed. Like, it's no. been a really good crowd. So, we yeah. love Walker Stalker. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we plan to be at many more. So, if you guys um, go to the Walker Stalker conventions, um, come visit us. Yeah. Look for us there. Oh, we, yeah. had a, we had a cool booth next to us. It was this caricature artist, but he specializes in zombie caricatures. His name is Stan Yen. You should check him out. He's on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and everything. Um, and he it's so amazing because you can... He'll draw you as a zombie caricature. He also does pretty much anything by request. My Little Pony was a popular one. Uh, He said he once drew a guy uh, as a wolf in sheep's clothing, which is pretty funny. Wow, that's a tall order. Yeah, and I was thinking (laughs) for my kids, uh, they would probably like to be drawn as animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's, so... Because that's that's all they care about right now. (laughs) Uh, My three-year-old and Meg's uh, well, he'll be almost six, right? Yep. He'll be six uh, in a bit. He, they, they were playing Five Nights at Freddy's the other day, so they sounded like. Uh, what but we they weren't. Probably... They weren't playing the game though. They were literally. Oh, no, no. They were playing it like they were in the game. Yes. Yeah. We would have hung out with them. Well, right, and that probably is a is a look into what our past would have been if we had known each other as kids. <laughs> yeah. We would have been like, yeah. you're gonna get murdered. I, yeah. I feel like it's it's so much more normal now. I think like I. Like, now it's like, yeah, you, you like scary stuff. That's okay. That's cool. Right. I feel like um, <laughs> back in back in our day, as though it was that long ago. Back in my but, day. Yeah. <laughs> I got to wait. I got to put my tension back. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like um, it just, I felt awkward about it. I felt like I couldn't be a goth girl because I was too happy to be a goth girl. But I realize right. now, like, that it's not that easy. There's There's room for everybody. Well, it's true, and I, you know, and who knows, I, we say, looking back, we would have told our younger selves Mm -hmm. just to be who we were, so that's our advice to you now, be who you are, because we're being who we are now, and we're happy. Don't hide that you like horror, it's okay. Or whatever you like. Or whatever you like, yeah. Um, so, the topic this week is Carrie, I chose Carrie. Should we start talking about it? Yeah, well, tell us, tell us about your personal history with it, and then, do you have some history in the movie, too? Um, so Carrie is the first, um, Stephen King movie, no, Stephen King book that I read. I, How old were you? 12, I think, 12 or 13. It's really when I started to get into reading horror fiction. Um, I loved horror movies as a kid, but I, I, and of course I read Goosebumps and that kind of thing, but I really hadn't read an actual adult horror novel. And so I read Carrie, um, it was in my parents' library, and I was like, I'm going to try this. And I'm so glad I did, because anybody who knows me now knows I'm a Stephen King fanatic. So I think Carrie, the book and the movie resonated with me at that age, about 12 or 13. She is a little bit older. But for me, I was always searching for horror movies that were about women. And I think I watched the movie pretty shortly after I read the book. Um, so that's kind of why I chose it, and I haven't watched it in many, many years. Or and nor have I read the book. In fact, when I was doing research, it said that Carrie, the epistolary novel, meaning it, it was written, I guess, in I I'm sorry to show my ignorance. I guess it was in letter form or journal form, but I don't remember. Have you? Did you read Carrie? I did, but I did. You know, it was written that way. You know, I I, I didn't I have a recollection of it. Okay, because I was like, oh, I forgot that. So, um, obviously, and this is the first Stephen King movie that was made. Um, It was made in 1976. And I just. So, the first movie based on a Stephen King novel is Carrie? It is. It was his first novel and the first movie. And it was kind of fun. Um, I found this quote. He said that 
Stephen King said that he was 26 at the time that they, they made this movie, and they paid him $2,500. Oh, my That's goodness. It. And this was, like, a big movie. It was directed by Brian De Palma. I mean, this wasn't, like, some little, you know, last week we did Night of the Living Dead, low budget. This was a bigger budget movie, and, yeah, he got paid $2,500. I mean, that's I'm not worried about him now, no. but um, that's just crazy to think about. So when I was doing research about the history of the movie, um, well, there was a few interesting stories. So... I found this story about Sissy Spacek, who, of course, plays Carrie. And uh, it's a, it looks like her husband kind of persuaded her to to audition. And so basically how she, she won out the role, and Melanie Griffith, for example, was kind of up for it, which I can't even picture. Uh, no, That's I can't strange. picture it. And it says, I'm looking at my notes here, it says that De Palma's first choice for the role of Carrie was Betsy Slade. I don't no know clue who that, that is. is. Maybe if she become Carrie, we would know who she is. But apparently, Sissy Spacek, um, to get the role, she actually came in dressed in a sailor dress that her mother had made her in seventh grade. She had the hem cut off. She rubbed Vaseline into her hair. She didn't wash her face, and she came in. And they were like, "This is Carrie." How old was she? Do you know? It says she was married. Well, yeah. So I didn't. I actually didn't write that down because, I mean, Carrie's supposed to be, what, six, seven, well, I guess 17 maybe, um, but she, I guess she must have been in her early 20s or something, but she looks so young. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, I thought that was cool that she came in all dressed up like that. But then, as I was researching, I came across Carrie the Musical. Yes. Do you know anything about that? I know that it exists. Apparently, it was a huge bomb. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. Appa- apparently, it's in the, oh, my gosh, I have to find this in my Yeah. There's a book called Not Since Carrie, 40 oh. Years of Broadway Musical Flops. Oh. It was fascinating. Um, apparently, they did a trial of it in Stratford-upon-Avon. Oh, that's could, where Shakespeare was Yes. <laughs> so, um, it, it had good um, beginning there. But apparently, um, they did that um, in Stratford-upon-Avon. It was choreographed by Debbie Allen. So, this was, this like, was like, the legit. real deal. But apparently... It was plagued with all these problems, one of which was um, whenever they doused Carrie in blood in the musical, it would ruin her microphones and oh. stuff, so they couldn't figure out how to do it oh, properly. Wait. But, like, Evil Dead, the musical exists, and they seem just fine. Well, I know this was the 80s, so, I mean, I, wait, I don't it know. Was, they did this musical this was in the, the 80s. 80s. Okay. This was, I didn't realize it yeah, was Yeah, this was 1988, ago. around. Mm-hmm. Um, and it even had one of the original, the actress... I think that played the teacher is in it in the, in the Broadway one. But anyway, apparently um, the woman who played um, Sissy Space char- character, Carrie in the play almost was decapitated on oh, opening night by a set piece. Okay, I was like, cursed. Oh my gosh. Like, it's I cursed. don't know. I don't believe in curses, but my <laughs> yeah. goodness. And she said, I'm gone. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. And Holy they God. literally had to replace her, but it, did so poorly that they only had to replace her for a very short time. So anyway, I just got wow. into all this. Um, and yeah, they said that people uh, opening night, people were booing. Oh, um, so apparently it was not, not a good like musical. Carrie the musical. Is, Carrie, I feel sorry I for it. Like Carrie the it. character. I know. Talk about curse. Well, yeah. Okay. So listen, we, yeah. we might, um, uh, try to revive this musical because that sounds, <laughs> I think so. Like something I would go watch. I think we do. In fact, I think, there was a revival. I'm looking at my notes. Oh, I think they did try to revive. You know, it. speaking of Broadway yeah. theater, Betty Buckley is in this movie. You know, and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, my dad and I saw her on Broadway in Sunset Boulevard when it was on its original run, and now it's oh. it's uh, back again with Glenn Close, um, okay. who originated the role, and then Betty Buckley took over. So she's a, oh. is a Broadway legend. Yes, yes. Oh, that's really cool. That's very neat. Okay, so let's just get. Let's just dive into Carrie. Okay, so tell me first. Yeah. How many times had you seen this movie? Okay. Before this, and when's the last time you watched? I it? mean, I haven't watched it in probably fifteen, twenty years. And how many times have you seen it beforehand? Like growing up, did you see it a lot? No, it wasn't one that I watched. It was kind of one of those that, you know, we all remember back in the day. It was either you had it on VHS or you watched it on TV or you taped it off TV right. or, or the, you know. Or you got um, it at the library. I yeah, you got it the library. library. Um, no, I think I probably saw it a handful of times. And I I think I saw it, like I said, I think after I read the book, if I recall. Uh, but there are just certain parts of it that really 
stuck in my mind. Okay, so you know what the mm-hmm. first thing I wrote down was? <laughs> High school girls are the worst. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Seriously. Okay, and, I, yeah. I saw this pre- Okay. High school. Okay. And you saw it, you know, what, what junior high ish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think this, I, I only saw the movie probably once. Okay. And I think this set up some of the terror of what to expect in high yes, school. Yes. That's, that's what I, that's, I was like, that's true horror. That, yes. Women, no, girls throwing tampons at me. Is what, this going to happen? What is more most terrifying? And having to shower with other people after gym. Like, I thought you were going to have to do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about your high school, but nobody okay. showered no. after gym there class. Was, there was one girl who really enjoyed being naked. <laughs> and it was weird. And everybody was names. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're not and outing you, me. person. <laughs> no. Um, no, it, it definitely, I watched it in that time. I mean... Let's get real. I watched it in that time of getting my period and watching that scene was absolutely horrifying. And it's stuck in my mind. First, when you first see Carrie, she sucks at volleyball. And I'm like, that's me. Well, yeah, I was that's never That's who athletic. I was in gym class. Yeah. Um, so I was right away like, I completely empathize with you. And then she has this awful experience where she has her period and she doesn't know what her oh my period gosh, even because is. Because her mother never told oh. her, which is all about, we'll get yeah. into that, but yeah. like the, the original sin. And like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, not knowing that you're going to start menstruating, this that is would be horrifying. Crazy. That's true horror. And that it, is ha- horror. it happens to people. I mean, oh. where they don't know. And yeah, and then these awful girls, these awful girls. We all, we all knew girls like this in high school. Um, thankfully, I was never bullied like that, like Carrie. But, um, yeah, it obvious, it, it really made me scared of what, you know, I had hoped that high school was going to be, like, Saved by the Bell. Right. Um, it, it really wasn't like that either. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, that was real. Yeah, that, That's real that scary. was terrifying. And then rewatching it, you know, so that prepared mm-hmm. me. I was like, oh, this is what high school is going to be like. And of course, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't truly that terrible. It wasn't great, <laughs> there was but it wasn't that terrible. Spots. But yeah. now rewatching it and looking back, it's like, no, it just makes me so mad because thinking about kids who get bullied and mm-hmm. everything Carrie oh, has yeah. to go through. And then we're not, we haven't even mentioned yet that her mother is awful. Oh my God. Played I just by, wrote her fucking mom. Uh, played by Piper Laurie, who I was familiar with through Twin Peaks because I was a Twin oh, Peaks yes. fan in high school. And so... Um, I, when I first saw this, I saw it before Twin Peaks came out. So Piper Laurie, you know, didn't, um, didn't have that place in my heart at yet. And my God, is she so well cast and terrifying. And she's this character. Wonderful to the point where I was like, I can't handle any more scenes with her because this is getting me so upset. Yes. Because she's so, I mean, that's what you want, you know? And she was just like, she was just inciting something in me that was just so, I just, I mean, Talk about a true villain in a horror movie. Oh, I yeah. mean, crazy. I mean, I don't want to, I don't, I won't talk about the end yet, but yeah. I just, she's, oh, and I wanted to share. Where did I put that note? Oh, Stephen King said, I hated high school. I don't trust anybody who looks back on the years from 14 to 18 with any enjoyment. If you liked being a teenager, there's something wrong with you. That's a Stephen King quote. Um, and I was like, of course he wrote Carrie. I, I feel uh, like yeah. that makes such perfect sense and it's so true. Um, really, did you really like high school? I mean, no. Did no, it, no. Did anybody? I mean, some people might. I mean, I, I mean, know, there are people. You know, the, the, uh, Married with Children, Al Bundy liked high school and he, because he's living in the past and he thought he was a football yeah. hero, but yeah. he hasn't done anything with yeah, his life. Yeah, so exactly. So it's like, if that's, if, if that's, those are the glory days, if those are the maybe, glory days, then that's, yeah. Okay, but Ooh. how about this telekinetic power? Would you like to have that power? Oh my gosh, I think that's why I like Carrie so much when I was a kid. It was like, oh my gosh, this girl actually gets to do something. There, she's not the Barbara in Night of Living Dead who's just like struck down. It was like Carrie was like moving things with her fucking mind. It was awesome. And and all I wanted throughout the whole movie was to let her know, like, it's okay, just do it. Yeah, like, this Don't is be cool. Held down. This is really cool. Like, this is amazing. Um... I wrote teacher slapping Carrie. There's been, oh, there were so many clapping gosh. or slapping scenes in this movie. Yes. And the teacher, I was like, I have to ask Kelly as a teacher, like, wait, no, what? no, but you know, <laughs> you okay, don't slap your- <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to name names, but you know, there, there were teachers and maybe a principal mm-hmm. back in, in the day who probably did slap kids. Probably. And, but now you would never oh, see God. that. I mean, even when I was growing up, I, 
I I was not <laughs> I wasn't slapped. I didn't see that. But yeah, that was crazy. There was a lot of <laughs> slapping scenes. Um, yeah, when she gets home and she's like, Mom, um, you didn't tell me that we get a period. I just felt so bad for her. Oh my gosh, I'll, I wrote down, let's educate our girls and boys and <laughs> yeah. non gender conforming persons yeah. because yeah. Okay, we need to know. We need to talk about menstruation. It needs yeah. to be out there. And nobody yeah. should be shamed for it. Oh, my gosh. And the teacher mom. was even shaming her, basically. Oh, I know. Ugh. Oh, my okay. gosh. And, and her mom. Okay, this is where true horror lies. It's mm-hmm. terrifying to think that she was growing up with that mother in that environment. And it's so scary because it could happen. It happens. It's happening right now. I yeah. mean, there are kids... In situations like that that don't have telekinetic powers. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and she, like, puts her in that closet oh, and locks God. her in the closet. It was really hard to With watch. With the scary Jesus statue. I wrote creepy Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, that, like, glowing eye Jesus. Yes. That's not cool. And that, I, I stuck out for me. Like, when you think back of movie memories, it's like, oh, I remember that. Yes. Um, the first scene is very iconic, and I remember that. And, yeah, the creepy Jesus and there's so many moments. Um, I I love how she uses her powers against the principal in the very beginning. Because um, he, he couldn't get her name right. Oh, I was like, God. get out of here. I know. The 70s. Well, and <laughs> something that's just the worst. Okay, so they have set this up perfectly. Again, it's just great writing. The boys are terrible. The girls are terrible. Her mm-hmm. family is terrible. The teachers yeah. are terrible. There's yeah. no hope and you just feel like you want to root for her but you're like you know what whatever you have to do I'm behind you because this is oh horrifying. which of course you know brings you to that epic oh, ending God. but okay so here's a question what do you think then of William Cat? I, I don't know what's his name in the show on the movie the blonde the hottie his, okay his hair is perfection <laughs> by the way yeah and he's He's so hot for high school. You can tell that guy is, like, 30. <laughs> yeah. No, he's definitely not a high school boy. And I want his hair. Like, if, yeah, like, if no, I could have his it hair It would literally right look now, good but... on you. It would look good on you. <laughs> so, okay. No, I. do you think his intentions are true, are you asking me? Yeah. Um. Geez, I, I think, geez, I don't know what I sound like. <laughs> Where are oh, Minnesotans? <laughs> I, I'm torn. I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's 100% true. No. I don't think his intentions are 100% good. It's like, I want them to be. I know. But what about his, what's his girlfriend? Um, Amy Irving is the actress's name. Yeah, I didn't write oh, them. Oh, Sue. Her name's Sue. Sue is kind of that one character that's kind of like bridging the gap between the bad and the good. Right. But she is, in the beginning, yeah, she's no, all she's about the throwing the tampons. She's the worst. She's, I mean... But then I think she does feel bad about it. Oh, um, yeah, okay. So speaking of the the blonde hottie, <laughs> they they meet in the library where all research used to have to be done. I was thinking that too. I said I wrote down. Oh my gosh, Carrie doesn't have Google to figure out what telekinesis oh, is. She, she had to. No, she, she had, had to use the card catalogs. And isn't that like your high school dream is to like meet a boy in the library? Yeah, like, we both read for the same <laughs> book. Like that's. <laughs> My she liked kind of his poem. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, that that was cute. And and then later, when they're like at the dance, like that was adorable. I know. When they were dancing, I know. Oh my oh, gosh! So, okay. Which makes everything. I mean, are we at the dance yet? No, Can I because talk about that? Okay. we should probably talk about John Travolta. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so this is what something I did not remember is that John Travolta is <laughs> in this movie. What it was so, it was so random. Heck and. He's a like, high school student again. Wait, when did student. Grease come out? I don't know. Well, I could Google we're it. not talking about Grease. No, <laughs> no. Let's not, it's not okay. even worth a Google. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like he. What we're is gonna up get with some him? angry Grease. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth tweeting us. Um, yeah, John Travolta. I said John. Tra- I wrote down John Travolta drinking beer, and then I literally asked myself, "Is that legal in 1976?" I wrote down. I thought he was drinking beer so casually as he was driving his car. I was like, "I is that legal?" And then the cop came, and then he like threw it on the girl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Okay, good." I I mean, I know it wasn't that long ago, but <laughs> um. Oh, and I wrote he got a little rapey. Yeah. Didn't he get yeah. a little rapey? Yeah. That? No. He was a little rapey. Oh, and then when he goes to get the pig blood, the girl was, like, so into watching him kill a pig. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, you're definitely going to die. I mean, I knew that already, but I'm just 
saying like that. What's up with her? Right. The the bad girl. I don't know what her name was. No, she's yeah. But it was so interesting. Something that I wrote down. You know, from from a feminist perspective, the part where the teacher is like telling Carrie that like she would be pretty if she wore makeup. Oh my gosh. I'm like, wow. Okay. I know. And um, that's the least of Carrie's problems. Oh, yeah, no kidding. And don't tell a girl that. No, no. Please, or like, teachers. oh, you just lost ten pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then your life would be perfect. Yikes. Um, yeah, that was that was very interesting. Um, yeah, there's some interesting characters, but John, John Travolta. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. That was a little fun job. It, it was a fun. Did you remember he was in it? Yeah, okay. I did. I did remember he was in it. Um. Oh, I wrote. I wrote dirty pillows. Oh yes. The mom, get out of here. I know. I you know I saw actually the other day that somebody has that written on throw pillows and you can buy dirty them. Pillow? Yeah. Oh, funny. That's really so. funny. I didn't remember that, and I was like, really, girl. And then and then Carrie's like, no. They're called breasts. And, and Carrie actually got to have some moments where she was like, um, I don't know. I felt like she got to have some some growing up moments. Yeah. Where she was like, I'm not going to take this anymore. She's definitely going through. I mean, we get to see this part of her story for a reason. Mm-hmm. And she's she's learning things. She's becoming a woman. She's becoming a woman. <laughs> not just because of her period. Um, oh, okay. So let's let's go to prom. First, let's talk about your prom, Kelly. What was your prom like? Um. <laughs> I had four proms. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, I well, let's, just pick one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'll I'll talk about my first prom. Okay. Um, I was in ninth grade. You could go to prom as a ninth grader if you were asked by a junior. Or oh, senior. here we go. <laughs> wow. I think I know which girl she was in the locker room. <laughs> Wait, no, a tampon thrower. <laughs> no, I would never. <laughs> Um, I was, I, so I was asked to prom by a senior and, uh, oh Lord. okay. And th- it was like a non date. Like we went and had dinner and he brought me home right afterwards and it was all very innocent. He and wasn't rapey like John Travolta. He wasn't. That's good. So, That's good. Um, so it was nice. It was a nice yeah, experience. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Um, we're going to tweet out and, and post pictures of our prom. Yes. Um, this won't be the prom. I, my, the picture from that prom I won't be posting, but Meg, how about your prom? Yeah, um, it's so boring. I went to both proms with my husband. Well, well at the time, he wasn't your husband. <laughs> <laughs> because I was married when I was 14. <laughs> it was promise and marriage. <laughs> um, no, he was not my husband at the time. But, yeah, I, I went to my junior and senior prom with my husband. And, you know, it's, it's like just like in this movie, they make prom into such a big deal. And I think we all have been sort of sold this idea that prom's like this most amazing night of your life. It's magical. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it was, fu- it was fun. But, but I mean, yeah. but if you're yeah. listening and you haven't been to prom, don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't stress. Um, it's not, it's not the most magical night of your life or anything. I mean, maybe it could be, but somebody just said, speak for yourself. And <laughs> yeah. <shut off> the <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, prom lover. Yeah, sorry, sorry. We're offending um, the grease pants. We, I know, lover. we're really on a roll. Um, <laughs> okay, can I say yeah. no, this prom? The yeah. build up to the dumping of the pig's blood is such good filmmaking. It is. And the lack of sound. Oh, I didn't if you know notice, there's sound. there isn't sound. There isn't oh. music. There isn't like this huge. I didn't even think about that. It's it's silent. It is oh. so good. And see, they did it so well. I didn't even I didn't even process that. That's that's really cool. Oh, okay. I wrote down a question. Why didn't the teacher, or why did the teacher pull Sue away? Well, she thought that she was going to be doing something nefarious but she wasn't she was actually trying to stop it but she thought she had bad intentions okay because i was That's like how i read it okay because i was like because then she just kind of like joined the group after she threw sue out and i know why she threw sue out so that sue could live right but i couldn't understand her character why she did it yeah but okay that's what i was you thinking. know another thing i wrote we're asking about his intentions he kisses carrie isn't that weird? 
he has a girlfriend. I mean, call, call me old fashioned, <laughs> but he has a girlfriend and he, he's like really romantic with Carrie. It wasn't like what you were just, just describing, like with your first prom, where right. it's kind of like, you know, well-behaved guy, just kind of like going on a non-date. So I just thought that was yeah. odd. Yeah. It you is. know, cause I mean, talk about, I mean, is he doing that to embarrass her though? Or like get a rise out of, his friend I felt like I felt about him that he was being genuine okay well you know maybe this describes something about us I was feeling more apprehensive <laughs> about him and you were trusting it was him. the hair yeah it was the hair <laughs> I was like okay, I just I wanted his hair. hair I didn't want to date him. oh you don't want to date him <laughs> he's in um other horror movies I think oh okay is he in house do you know what I'm talking about that movie it's called house I know what you're talking so about, you know what I'm talking about Tweet me and let me know if he's in house or what he's in. William Cat. Okay, do you have questions for me? Yeah, I okay. want to know. Wait, is there anything else you wanted to say before I ask? Oh my god! I mean, I guess we should actually talk about the blood and the. Problem. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the whole point of Carrie. So okay, oftentimes, you know, we're not necessarily rooting for a bunch of people to die, <laughs> or are we? Or are we? We. We have a podcast, but, but you we know what? Everybody is so terrible in this movie. When Carrie starts shutting yeah. those doors, I'm like, "You go, girl. Get it, girl. Get it." Yeah, boy, I mean, bye to all the boys. Yeah, like, seriously. Bye. Um, <laughs> the the cute guy. He gets knocked by. The, I forgot that he gets knocked by the pail. Oh, yes. Johnny in Night of the Living Dead style, and just yes. goes down. That I was, forgot that too. So he. So we never really get to see like how he would have acted. Oh, you know, if he would have. He just got knocked out. Or, yeah, but you're still defending this man. <laughs> like, I know. I'm sorry. Good. I'm. I think. I you're feel smitten. Like, I feel like he fell in love with Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, and you know what part really got me? Oh my gosh! And this is, this is what's so fun about this because when you watch things as a child, it's so different. Watching Carrie's mom stab her. Now that I'm a mother, uh, was really hard on me. Like I was just like, no, you can't stab her. Horrific. You can't. St-. It was awful. That just affected me more uh, in a, in a stronger way than than the first time I saw it or read it. Um, so that scene, I didn't remember that. That was crazy. Of course, I did remember the great scene of. Um, the religious imagery of oh. her mom getting all the knives in her yes. and Carrie using her powers. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, and then the house kind of like comes apart, but it doesn't even seem like, I guess it's kind of like a manifestation of like Carrie's. What, what did you think? Well, yeah. I was? think, I think too, it's, <clears throat> it's her, all of her power coming together. And this is how, cause it didn't even seem like she, was trying to do that, right. like tear the house down, but it was just like, yeah, she couldn't even control it yeah. anymore or something. That was kind of crazy. And I, and of course I did remember the, the, the jump scare at the end when, um, yes. Sue is having the dream. Right. And Carrie grabs her leg. That's, that's a really good one. Okay. Okay. So questions. some questions to ask. These are the questions we're going to mm-hmm. ask every week. Uh, first of all, did Carrie live up to your memories of it? Yeah, I thought it was, I was really impressed for a 1970s film, especially from a feminist standpoint, too. Yeah. And just, and just, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, did any scene stand out to you as, re- uh, like, really well done or really terrible? <laughs> um, you know, I think I, I mean, I was kind of talking about the ones that really I remember as a kid. I mean, I think Carrie, that first scene that first scene in the bathroom is the one that kind of has always stuck with me because it's the cruelty of humans. Yes. Uh, and that's the real, real horror. Yeah. And, and so I think that scene still is really one of the best scenes of the movie. Yeah. Now, was there anything you might've mentioned this already, but was there anything that you didn't remember? I like, didn't remember I didn't Carrie's know. mom stabbing her. Okay. Kelly didn't remember John Travolta. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can't think of, I mean, no, I think I pretty, I, 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 I had that pretty well tucked into my memory. Do you, uh, did you notice if it passed the Bechdel test? 
It definitely passed yes. the Bechdel test. Definitely. Uh, yeah, this one was an easy one. It, it was fun to have so many female characters. You know, that's something I I took for granted, too, is that, mm-hmm. oh, there were a ton of female characters in this scary movie. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it still, or was it ever scary to you? It wasn't scary. The It didn't have those sort of images that, like, kind of stuck in my head. I wouldn't describe Carrie as an extremely terrifying movie. It's more psychological and it's more scary because of, like I said, the, the humanity aspect of it, I think is what's really scary. Her, her mom is, you know, could be a real person and is a uh, real person. Yeah, that is scary. And does it, does the movie seem dated to you? You know, I feel like, of course, like we were, we were laughing about the card catalog, and I mean, there's definitely some 1970s stuff going on here, but I feel like a girl or a boy or anyone watching it, it would it could resonate with them now. Yeah, I, these I, themes I are yeah eternal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, of course. I mean, there's some 70s. I, I wrote like, oh my gosh, prom dresses. The prom right. dresses were crazy. Uh, but no, I th- I think. It definitely stands the test of time. I think it's a great movie. Rewatch it, guys. Excellent. Okay, time for our fast forward segment. Uh, since Meg picked the movie this week, I am picking our fast forward, and it's related, but it's not necessarily horror. I picked the Stephen King Dark Tower series. Uh, I read the series like right out of high school. I read what was available at the time, the first. A few books, and then there was this time. If you do you remember this, Meg, because you've been a Stephen King fan, when he got into the car accident and he didn't write for a while. Now that was terrifying. And that was terrifying. And there was this period of time when he didn't write The Dark Tower because he wasn't sure what to do. And then there was this letter writing campaign, and I wrote a letter to Stephen King, and I got a response. Oh, and you I did? still have the envelope, and it's, it's a typed envelope, and it says Stephen King in the corner. And it was from his assistant, but the return address and Stephen King and and said he appreciates the letters that fans have been sending and he's working hard on the next books. And then the next books came out. And of course, now the Dark Tower series is completed and the first movie is going to be released this summer, August 4th, 2017. Idris Elba. Is it Idris or Idris? I, I say Idris. I don't know. Oh, I say Idris. Okay. It tweet doesn't us matter. That. You can tweet us <laughs> how to say it. <laughs> uh, or, or Idris, you could just appear on our show and tell us how you oh pronounce your name. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, fun. no, I literally meant yeah. Idris Elba, tweet us. <laughs> okay. Um and yeah and let us know if you want to be on our show. But um okay so um yeah I okay so I have to say this okay no spoilers by the way because I'm no, I'm, not I'm on book anything. four everyone I'm not gonna spoil anything. Okay. So I want to say when I was introduced to the gunslinger which is the first book of the dark tower Mm -hmm. series someone told me you know just get through the first book and then it gets better and it does and i've been trying to convince meg to read it for years and she (laughs) is and she's on book four which is amazing but people would say oh you either love it or you hate it and well i'm i fall into the love camp roland deshane is one of the greatest characters and i love that you just always get to play him i'm so excited yeah it's I, I'm I'm very excited to see what they do with the movie because I was reading uh, the second book going, how is this ever going to be a movie? How are they going to do it? I don't know. It's so cerebral. I'm excited. Like, I don't know how they're going to do it, but um, there, there, have been a, there have been a lot of not great Stephen King movies, but I feel like this one has so much potential and it's going to be good and... I'm excited. Well, you know, and it's been a road. It's been a journey in itself mm-hmm. just to get the movie made. It's been, uh, what's his name? He was in No Country for Old Men. I'm showing my age now. I'm forgetting <laughs> names of actors. It's what's okay. that guy's name? Uh. <laughs> well, anyway, he was cast as Roland for a oh, while. Oh, oh. And. Uh, I almost had it. <laughs> the, the bad guy. And then, um. I know there was a campaign to try to get Bruce Campbell to play him, Roland for a while, if which I've, I've been on board for back, back in the day. Uh, but it's just incredible that it's actually coming to fruition, and it's going to be in theater so soon. Uh, something that's interesting, and you're, maybe you're aware of this, Meg, being a Stephen King fan, but there are a ton of tie-ins to other novels of the Dark Tower series. Just to name a few, It, 
which is also coming out with a movie soon. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen the trailer for that. It's um, amazing. It has tie-in yes. to the Dark Tower series. Desperation Regulators, mm-hmm. um, Insomnia, Talisman, The Mist, The Stand, Rose Matter, and I've, re- Atlantis. I've read all of those, and now I'm reading The Dark Tower. Now I'm like, I need to read them all again after. I want to read The Stand after, because yes. I know that it's, it's tied so, in. It's so amazing. And I just I remember just reading Insomnia like randomly when it came out, and there's this this t- tie in to the gunslinger. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, and and it's just brilliant. I I love Stephen King. I'm a big I'm a big fan. The world building is so neat, and that's kind of what makes Carrie kind of interesting. Carrie kind of is not like a lot of his other books. True, I feel, you know. I feel like listen. I absolutely love Stephen King. He doesn't always have a, a female protagonist. Um, I know Dolores Claiborne. I know there's lots of great... He has lots of great female characters. Um, but I think it's cool that his first novel is about a teenage girl. That I is mean, cool. I feel like that... When, I can't think of any other teenage girl that he's based a whole book around. But I think that's pretty neat. But I'm very excited for The Dark Tower. And I'm going to finish book four before it comes out so that at least... Yes. I'm there. I think I think you'll... That right will help now, you I'm lot. reading he, They're on Blaine right now. Okay. So that's what's happening. So <laughs> we need to do our ratings. Oh, um, yeah. So how about Buckets of Blood for okay. Carrie this week? that sounds good. Out of um, one to ten Buckets of Blood, how would you rate Carrie? And then uh, the Dark Tower series, I know you're only through book four, but okay. and then how would you rate that also on okay. Buckets of Blood? <laughs> okay. I will give Carrie... Eight buckets of blood because Carrie is really good. It's a it's a great film. Yeah, I mean eight. That's a really good number, right? Yeah, no, that's good. I I would give Carrie uh, seven buckets of blood. I think it I think it is great, and I think uh, I I love all the females in it. It didn't resonate with me as much as some other movies did, though, in my childhood. So in this rewatch, mm-hmm. I, I, I'll give it a seven. Okay. And how about uh, the Dark Tower series up to this point? Buckets of Blood. <laughs> ten. Ten, ten, ten. I mean, that, I mean, I am that person who's read all Stephen King and was, like, so stubborn about the Dark Tower. Kelly's, like, yes, <laughs> nodding sagely. And I'm just so glad that I started reading it because oh. it's so good. <laughs> I'm so happy. Well, I obviously... Um, a 10 as well. If you know me, I the number 19 keeps appearing in everything that I do. And my daughter was born on the 19th. Um, it, I didn't plan that, but <laughs> the number 19 has... She has insisted. Yeah. <laughs> Get this baby out of me. No, um, it's all about the number 19. It keeps appearing. And so it's just little things like that. It's I didn't realize how much it was a part of my life, but it was decades you know, since it came out and then was completed. So... Oh, I love it. I'm so okay. excited to see the movie. Yeah, me too. So, should we preview next week? Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. We are... Uh, I haven't seen it. I'm oh, excited. Okay. <laughs> so, the next movie uh, for next week is my Back to My Pig. And we're watching a movie that I used to get at the video store, Blood Hook. <laughs> That's Orig- a great name. <laughs> originally, the original title was Musky Madness. So, oh my god! Get ready. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> get ready, everybody! And guess what? It's on YouTube. So, um, oh, you know, and we should tell people where Carrie was available. Oh yeah, I watched it on Hulu. Hulu, yep. Yeah, Hulu. I was, I watched it on Hulu yeah. as well. So if you've got a Hulu subscription, go at it. Go check out Carrie, and you know. We're we're trying to remind everybody rewatch these movies too. You might have seen Carrie twenty years ago, but watch it now and and you might be surprised what you enjoy. So a few things to plug if you are looking to find us, the Horror Rewind podcast. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You'll find us at Horror Rewind. And if you're looking for Meg to read some of her stuff, Meg, where do we oh, find you? Oh, I'm everywhere. You can't get rid of me. I'm on Amazon, Facebook, Instagram. Just look me up, Meg Hoftal. You can also go to my website, MegHoftal.com. She will be looking into your window. Maybe. Yeah, I'm She's lurking all there. around you. <laughs> She'll be carrying with her a picture of that blonde guy, apparently. <laughs> I, she it, you know, I think that was true love we witnessed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're like, you know what, though? Okay, but, so, wait, just, this yeah. is like a little addendum yeah. here, but her husband is blonde. I'm starting to wait, see the connection. Wait, husband? Your oh, husband! I, <laughs> I thought you meant, like, sissy spacex. No. Like, I, your husband is blonde. I think, 
What I like, if? What Why? if? And I went to prom with him. Oh my god! <laughs> Every you guys, we've con- we've like discovered. If you have any um ideas of more horror movies with blonde men that take um women to the prom, tweet us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna hold up for Idris Elba. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's our opposite of the Bechdel test for this yeah. week. Okay. <laughs> Take care, everybody. We'll see yep. you in the horror section. Yep. Bye.